Um, first, I'd like to welcome both of you. Um, my name is Amy Pham, and I'll be your mediator today. Um, if you could just please introduce yourselves. I've not met either of you, so if you'll just start with my right. My name is Hillary Anderson, and I'm the manager of the Green Giant Country Club. Okay. Uh, my name is Mary Langer, and I am a former former member of the country club. Do you mind if I refer to you as both by your first names? Go ahead. Um, okay, so we're in mediation today. Um, uh, as your mediator, I'm just a third party neutral. Um, basically, I'm here to help facilitate a discussion between you two. If we reach a settlement, that's you know awesome. If we don't, then that's perfectly fine as well. Um, I just want to help you guys kind of communicate your issues and what's going on and maybe reach a settlement for your dispute. Um, I have a couple procedural things I'd like to discuss with both of you. Um, I do ask that if one party is speaking, then you know the other party is just quiet and allows um, you know, like if Hillary, if Mary is speaking, you just allow her to speak. And if you have any questions, I've provided both of you with um, a notepad and pen. Just write it down. You can respond accordingly when it's your turn. Um, that way it just helps um, both parties be able to communicate their issues. Um, and there may be a part in our process where I have to meet with you separately. Um, when I do that, you know, it may or may not happen, but when I do that, I'll just escort you out of the room and then I'll speak with one party um, just separately. <laughs> um, there is a confidentiality thing and, you know, I want to encourage for you two to both be candid with each other. And so most of what we say here will remain confidential. There are a few exceptions, um, but they're very rare. And if you want me to get into that, I'm more than happy to. Um, but, you know, mainly it's if you want to, you tell me you're going to commit a crime. You know, obviously I have to report that, but for the most part, what we say here will be confidential and, and likewise when we speak separately. Um, if an agreement is reached, I will write it down. It will be binding and I will have both of you um, sign it. I'm not quite sure the nature of your dispute, but if it is a court-ordered mediation, I will just report to the court that we've reached a settlement, um, but the terms of the settlement will remain confidential. Do you have any questions for me before we start? No. no. Okay. So, um, if you don't mind me asking, who is the plaintiff in this crime? I am. Okay. So, since you're the plaintiff, do you uh, mind just starting and telling me what's going on here? Sure. Um, I am the manager of the Green Giant Country Club. I've been in this position for many, many years. Um, I'm responsible for all sorts of things at the club, and one of those things is uh, getting and se well, securing membership. And um, essentially what happened is that uh, Mary came to, to me wanting to join the country club and I explained uh, the, the rules of the facility and the costs of things. There's a, a one-time joining fee and then there are dues each month and there are, um, you know, obviously if you're, if you're eating there that is an additional cost and, and you know whatever um, and and one of the things that Mary was interested in was uh, using the golf course and she particularly liked that for larger parties you you didn't have to rent a golf cart but our policy changed which Policies change and members just have to to adapt to that and the new policy was that and this was after she joined Was that um, we were going to start requiring that larger parties Rent one of the golf carts to speed up the process on the golf course so that it doesn't hinder the playing of, of other members and Mary became very upset about this and she, she said that some of the staff talked really rudely to her and and I'm I've never had any complaints about our staff, but that's, you know, it's neither here nor there. But um, she sent me a letter and said in it that she didn't want to be a member anymore and wanted me to pay her back her one-time joining fee and pay all of these other costs. And that's not the way the company operates. Um, we offer the membership, you pay the membership fee, and then you pay dues, and um, 
even if you decide not to continue your membership, the, the cost for the initial um, membership doesn't ever get repaid. It's, um, that's basically the, the amount of money that you're paying for the, the ability and the privilege to join the club. Um, and that's pretty standard with, with all sorts of recreational facilities and country clubs and what have you. Um, and basically, she, I, I filed in court on, as a representative for the country club to uh, get the, the money that she owes. She didn't pay her bill for several months, her dues, because of this. And, um, and, and, and that's, you know, the, yeah. Um, you mentioned you filed a complaint in court. How much did you file for? Um, the, the exact amount in court is for $2,461, which is um, the fees and the charges at the country club is $2,286 plus $175 in court costs um, because we, we really shouldn't even have gotten to this point. So the total amount was $2,461. Uh, I I was a member uh, of the club, uh, joined over a year ago, uh, mainly because that, as Hillary explained, that, that golf club had a policy where you could walk the greens, uh, which is great exercise, as opposed to just being on a golf cart, which doesn't really do much. Um, so uh, I joined mainly for that purpose, because I'm a, I'm a golfer. Uh, I found out that the policies had changed, um, and... I, I was disappointed by the policies. Um, I was out there uh, one Saturday of being in June. It wasn't uh, that busy, but I happened to have two clients with me. Um, so we're, we're walking to the next hole, and all of a sudden a couple of, of the employees just start yelling that it's the policy that we have the golf cart, and, and they were just speaking in a really rude manner. It, it wasn't as though someone just came up and said, Here's the policy. It was screaming loudly across the um, across the course, um, and I, you know, I just I looked foolish in front of my clients who I brought out there, which you know, which has the potential of hurting hurting my business. Um, so of course I went in and I, I bought a golf cart and and all that sort of things because I didn't want to make it seem like I was cheap or there was another reason. Um, but after that, I just I, I decided that this wasn't a good fit. This isn't why I joined the club, and I obviously didn't join the club to get disrespected in front of potential clients, which is a huge reason I joined, is to bring clients there. Um, so I sent a letter um, to Hillary explaining that I wanted to uh, end my membership. Um, I didn't hear a response for six months. I heard nothing back. I assumed that it had been canceled. Um, and then I, I got a letter and the letter uh, was for eight months of, of dues, uh, which are $220 a month. I think that equals something like $1,760, uh, plus a 10% late fee on, that, on those months, which was $176, um, and a, a bill for the club charges, the, the cart, and, and some food for me that summer, which was $350. Um, I had expected to receive a bill, but I expected to receive a bill for maybe that end month. Um, and I mean, obviously, I have no problem paying for my, my drinks out on the course or the the cart that I rented, but I didn't expect to get a, a four digit bill, um, especially when I had no notice that it was coming. If I would have known that I would, my um, membership wouldn't have been canceled immediately or from the end of that month. I could have spent that time golfing there. I would have still been a member. I would have taken advantage of that membership. Um, but I didn't do that because I was under the understanding because I heard nothing in return that I was canceled and I was no longer a member of the golf club. Um, so I, I got a letter asking for those um, those fees, and then I found out on top of it that um, they, they filed suit. Um, and so now, it's, now it, there's a legal case against me for this. So I, I'm generally pretty, um, if that was handled, and, and B 
being now this follow-up six months later saying that I owe all sorts of money for an account that I didn't even know was still was still valid. Okay. Um, Lauren, do you have your points in there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, I mean, I, I, it, it's essentially the way that you know, we agree on the, the facts of the case. Okay. Um, I'm going to meet with you separately just to kind of um, get a better understanding of your position. So, um, do you mind, or would you mind, maybe since you brought the suit, do you mind if I meet with you first? Fine. Okay. Here, I'm just going to escort you out. So, as I understand it, um, you filed suit for $2,461, mm -hmm. is that correct? And that's, um, how much of that is the actual membership and dues and things like that? Well, there are eight months of dues that, okay. that weren't paid. That's the two months that Mary was there and using the golf course and then six months where she she wasn't there and it, it's two hundred and twenty dollars of dues per month and that was one thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars mm -hmm. then there are the club charges which is food and the cart rental and that's a flat three fifty and then there are late fees because each month that you're late, you're charged an additional $22, so eight months at $22 is $176. And then um, the $185 in court costs. Right. Well, $175. I'm sorry, $175. And then she filed a counterclaim wanting four months of dues and then she wanted the membership fee back and that's never something that is returned that is your the payment of the privilege of, of being able to become a member how much is the membership fee three thousand five hundred it's just the same kind of fee that when you join a gym you pay a chunk up front and that is to join and then you pay dues month it's, it's the same thing okay um, Mary mentioned that she sent you a letter back in June um, can you tell me a little bit about that did you ever receive the letter um, I wasn't aware of the letter until months later um, when I when I, when I sent the, the, the bill to her um, and what is the country club's policy on cancellation? For cancellation, um, the club can choose out of its members to either offer them, they can, okay, so with, with any member, say that there are, um, there have been a lot of, they've been late every month and there have been all sorts of problems with them. The club can choose not to extend their membership, to not offer them to continue on the next financial year. But um, you know, generally, we don't have any problems, and all of our members stay on year to year. You don't have to pay that thirty-five hundred dollars each year. That's just a one-time your initial entrance into the club. Um, so typically, if there's going to be some kind of cancellation, it's because we choose not to let someone come back because of consistent late payment or, you know, maybe there was too much alcohol consumed on many occasions and there were a lot of problems resulting from that. But again, it's very rare. Um, we also, with, with a cancellation, if your cancellation is received and, you know, in a, a timely manner and and, and we get it um, we will stop the membership 
that you have to pay what you owe up to that point, whether it's, um, you know, whatever portion of dues are owed for the month, um, expenses from food and drinks and golf carts and, and all of that, and then there's nothing more. Um, we never give back the entrance fee, the 3500 because that is what you pay to open the con to open your your membership. Okay, so if you said you had not received Mary's letter until much later, um, do you have a roundabout date of when you received notice? I have, actually, I have it written down specifically. Um, it wasn't. I, I received an initial letter from from Mary in in August. She called me in June and she was upset. And then in August, she actually sent me a letter basically detailing the same thing. But she was upset about the policy changes, and which is something that's in the contract um, that you know policies change, and that's that's how things work. Um, and then so I received this letter from her in August that detailed what we had talked about, that she was upset about the policy changes and that she um, that she was upset about the way that some of the staff allegedly treated her on the golf course, which, you know, to me just seemed outrageous because we have never had any kind of reports like that. And I've been at the country club for many, many years and never had anything like that. Um, but... I apologized um, to her both on the phone and, and later um, if she felt that any of the staff were rude because that's really all there, there is to do about it if there's, there's no way to prove anything. And so we did that. And then um, she, she, she canceled the membership um, in that same letter that she she sent in August and um, it that's that's basically the timeline. Okay, so she canceled the letter in August. Okay. I'm sorry, she canceled the membership in her letter in August. Right. Um, and I didn't even see the letter until months later. I don't know. Um, I mean, it is our policy to respond to everything very, very quickly, especially with, with something that's dealing with money. And it it wasn't there. It wasn't in my box. I, I didn't see it until a couple months later. It was in my box. It was on the outside. It was dated August. But I, I mean, I don't know. Still at this point, I don't know what happened. But I responded you know, within just a few days of once it was in my box, I responded. Okay. Would you be open to maybe accepting that she canceled her membership in August and charging her for just the months of membership up until that point? Um, because you mentioned earlier that that's your company policy is at that point in which they write the letter, that's when you end the membership. And you also mentioned um, she didn't use the facilities after. Yes, potentially, but I'm not the one that's in control of the money. I'm just the representative for the country club. And the, I, I wouldn't like this to be revealed, but I cannot accept less than $2,000 from Mary for what she owes. Okay, and what is that figure based off of? Um, that figure is is based off of what I mean, the board of directors has has said because as far as we're concerned there wasn't really any mistake made on our end in terms of when the letter was received um, and we didn't she was still a member she been at the least she should have checked to see you know that's a you don't receive a letter back, you should most definitely call and, and follow up and see where things are. And we never heard anything from her. And we had no receipt of the letter. So to us, she was still a member. Okay. 
So $2,000 is, it sounds like it's almost right at eight months of membership and um, the food and other charges that Mary has owed for golf cart and the drinks while she was there. It, I mean, we, the light fees, I mean, that, that, that could go and then we would still be knocking off you know, I think about a hundred and ten dollars of what we feel is rightfully owed to us as the uh, as the country club because the facilities were there for her to use. She should have called to check on the status of things, um, and obviously we would have handled this a lot differently had we been aware of the fact that she wanted to leave. But without knowing that, we counted her as a member and. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss with me regarding what you what you want to seek out of this mediation? No, I would just say the only thing that I don't really want you to talk to her about is the the amount of money that I told you. Mm -hmm. Your two thousand dollars. You want me to right? Just don't say anything about that. Um, but you know, please feel free to tell her where we're coming from and that we really feel that she should have followed up with us because we didn't get it. It So many times, things are lost in the mail, and then they appear much later. And this, it was in my mailbox, and at, not in August, but many months later, and I answered it within, I think, two or three days. Um, so it is our policy to, to respond quickly, and we... Our business is known, I mean, uh, country clubs are typically pretty user-friendly, as we like to say, but our, t our, our club is known for, for um, really respecting our, our members and, and working with them and, and treating them, you know, with the utmost respect and fairness, and, and that's absolutely what we want, and we don't want um, Mary to, to leave being so angry but we also have a business to run and with no knowledge of cancellation we we want what is owed to us okay and you mentioned um, just your business and your your image do you have any additional concerns regarding how that would look I mean how this claim and counterclaim looks on towards your other members or existing members well, she's definitely been talking to people, trying to get them to leave the, the club, and we don't want to lose our members. And I'm not, I'm not really convinced that they will actually leave because we haven't done anything to them. Whatever she's saying is not something that they've experienced, and they've never had any issue with the staff or, or anything like that. I've, um, as I said before, I've been with the company for eight years. That's a long time to have never received a complaint about a staff member. That's a very long time because we only hire the best and we want our members to be treated the best. And, and we've never had anything like this happen. We, of course, we've had people cancel because they moved or it's just too expensive or, you know, for a variety of reasons, but we've not had anything contentious like this. Of course, people are late sometimes with their payments, which is why we have a late fee. But, you know, it, those are usually settled pretty quickly. It's just something like, oh, I forgot. Or, um, but we did what we were supposed to do. Our facilities and everything remained open to her because she was a member. And as soon as we got the letter, responded with the fact that she had not paid us anything. Okay. Um, I'm going to escort you out and I'll meet with Mary and kind of try to get a better understanding of her side of it. So I've had a chance to talk to Hillary and um, I'm going to try to get a better understanding of your side of things right now. So 
Um, you mentioned that you sent the letter in August, or I'm sorry, in June or August? Um, I believe right around August. Okay. And um, so Hillary mentioned that you filed a claim. I'm sorry, you filed a counterclaim. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what your, your claim is and you know what that involves? Sure. Um, the counterclaim uh, came after I discovered that they had made a claim against me. Uh, the counterclaim covers um, what I mentioned before, the, the eight months due, um, which was the $1,760, um, the 10% late fees. They added on to that, which was the $176. Um, the club charges, the 350 So everything that essentially was in that bill, plus um, the 3500 membership fee. It's, it's a one-time membership fee. Uh, it's, um, it's that high because you're usually a member of 5, 10, 20 years, maybe a lifetime. Um, and I was only a member for, for roughly a year. Um, um, so, the, so that's what the, the, counter, the counter claim is for. Um, originally, I didn't intend to go to court at all, but after I realized that that was the way that they were going to pursue it, um, I, I filed a counterclaim. Okay. Um, what is it that you're hoping to get out of this mediation? I mean, do you have, can you tell me a little bit about what your, your goals are? Uh, sure. Um, you know, one of the things is, is definitely money. I don't expect to really be walking out of the mediation um, with a check or anything like that. Um, but I, I would like, essentially, um, the eight months of membership dues to be waived and the late fees to be waived. Um, I, I just feel like considering they didn't contact me and, to, and give me any idea of what was going on for six months and then had a, a pass due on the top of the late fee letter was completely unfair as if I was still, still a member of that club, I would if I would have known, I would have, you know, taken uh, the opportunity to golf more, to use that membership, but because I thought I wasn't, I, I wasn't there once. Um, I didn't do one thing at that club because I didn't believe I was a member. Um, so I think that should be waived. Um, I, I'm angry that I was forced to use a cart, but I mean, at the end of the day, if I have to end up paying that, that $350, that's, that's not the end of the world. Um, to be honest, I, if they would just drop their suit and drop this bill, um, I'd be happy to, to not have to get the refund on the, the one-time payment of that thirty-five hundred. Um, I mean, obviously, if they're willing, to, if we can, if they're willing to negotiate on that, I will. But essentially, I, I really need this suit dropped within thirty, forty-five days. So that's that's my primary concern. Okay. Um, were you happy with the facility aside from the new policy changes regarding the golf cart? I mean, would you be open to using the facility again and like remaining a member at all? Or um, I mean, I, I did like their facility. I'm not happy with the new golf policy, but there's no other golf club in the area that offer walking greens anymore for larger groups. I guess another one of my concerns is I, I'm a real estate agent and I was working specifically with someone who's a club member and um, all of a sudden they kind of stopped talking to me and I'm not 100% sure but I, I have a hunch that it, it's based off what's been happening with the club and negative things that might have been said about me and I'm not sure if that's coming from the, directly from the club but if, if that's going on I, I wouldn't feel that comfortable. I guess I don't know if they even want me back at this point. I know we're, we're not in the best situation. Okay. Um, I mean, is that a possibility at all? If you and Hillary wanted, like, would you be open to discussing that with Hillary? Because you mentioned, you know, you enjoyed their facilities, and aside from the single instance, and obviously the suit that it brings us here today, um, everything is fine, and you have clients who attend the facility or who use the facility as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they. If they were willing to drop some of, for the months that I wasn't using the club and that I thought I was canceled, if, if some of that money was waived, um, 
I, I would consider maybe just keeping my membership, um, just considering I've already put that thirty five hundred towards it. Okay. Um, are, is there anything else that you want to tell me or talk to me about before I bring Haley back in? Um, any other concerns or issues you may have? You know, I, I, I don't know if they've done this, but I, I think they should talk to their staff. It, it isn't a concern I have with your fall management. It's it's some of the younger kids that come in for the summer, um, particularly when they're so young and looking forward to that sort of thing. It, they don't really seem to understand that business professionals are usually the people who often write um, country club and have clients and are networking and that sort of thing. And I, I just thought it was really appropriate, inappropriate, and I wouldn't want anything like that to happen again. Okay, so I mean, would you be open to maybe proposing? that as part of some resolution if we reach one today to have a mm -hmm. No, um, I feel comfortable saying that. Okay, is there anything that we've discussed so far that you don't want me to tell Hillary or bring up when we meet back up again? Um, I guess at, at this point I wouldn't necessarily want her to know that I, I'd be okay with waiving that $3,500. Mm -hmm. um, it's something I would consider um, based on what they're willing to do with with the bills that they sent me and getting out of um, my membership. But um, until I have a better idea of they, what they want to do, I, I don't necessarily want to throw that away. Okay. All right. Um, let me go get Hillary, and then um, we'll come back, and hopefully we can have a discussion about this. In the okay. I'll be right back. So I've had a chance to speak to you separately, and um, it sounds like you both do want to reach a resolution. Um, Mary, you mentioned that you did enjoy the facilities while you were a member, and Hillary, you mentioned that you know it's a great facility. Um, you've had no issues up until now, and you know, Mary was a good member as well, and you really didn't have any issues until the single incident and the subsequent case, right? Do you guys want to just talk to each other and discuss some of the things that? You told me. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Want to start? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, as as I told the mediator, I um, while I was a member, besides um, the change in the policy and the way I was treated that one particular day by um, by some of the staff, I haven't had any instances. I mean, I, I do like those greens. I like the course. I haven't had any problems besides that. I guess generally what what I was most disappointed with was that I received a bill so late after um, I had that, that letter um, and there was a, a late fees attached and, and all these things that I mean I, I have no problem with paying a bill um, but it, it that wasn't a bill that I was expecting in for that amount okay well um, and I also I told Amy that it I've worked for eight years at the club and it is my personal policy to respond within just a few days of getting any kind of call or letter from a member and I did not receive your letter until just a few days before I responded I pick up my mail from my box and I take it to my desk and that's where I where I deal with all of that I don't know what happened I have I have no idea but I I responded within a few days of, of receiving it um, I did notice that it was dated in August um, but you also have to understand that aside from that we um, we we didn't hear from you by phone or follow up or anything like that and so without me having received the letter I thought that you had just moved on and you were 
the membership was fine and, and everything. Um, and obviously, there's a, a difference between us about that. But we, we're a club and we, we make changes to our club um, with what money we are guaranteed from our, from our clients and members. And um, that $3,500, that initial membership fee, is something that doesn't get returned. Um, I, I am not at liberty to make any kind of decisions about that because I'm not responsible for our books and, and the money. That's something that the board of directors ruled in the contract that that $3,500 is the startup fee. But the other thing I can talk about and have some leeway if um, I uh, I guess the you know I understand that I knew that the thirty five hundred dollars went towards that um, you know I was hoping to be a member of the club five ten twenty years um, you know some of the club members are lifetime members. Um, I guess it would depend on, on how much on the other charges, I guess, right. that you would have liberty to, to discuss or to, to limit or to reduce would kind of affect that. I, I, I think there's some potential that if, if most, if not all of that, was waived, um, that I, I would be fine with not pursuing the, the 3500 but I, it, it would have to be probably pretty substantial. Well, what I can say about that is that there's, I mean, there really is nothing to do about the 3500 That is in the contract that it's non-refundable for however long the membership is, no matter how long it is, it's non-refundable. Mm -hmm. um, so that 3500 has to, has to stay. But um, I am willing to, to remove the late fees. And I'm also willing to adjust some of the other costs, but I think that um, it might be good to consider that maybe some other option that's not all monetary, like um, you know, like year-long a year-long access to the club where all you're responsible for are the charges for what you eat and if you rent a golf cart, something like that. I mean, we would have to be paid um, a, a decent portion of the money back for um, the, well, definitely for the charges for the food and the, the cart rental that you accrued while you were a member. Um, but we would give you I mean, and maybe we could even work something out where all that you pay is your food and we could just comp you golf cart use for the year that you have free access to the club. Um, so if, if there was the year access, would, um, would I still be responsible for that 1760 or, or what's the idea with that? Um, you would be responsible for a portion of that. If, just give me a second. If I only charged you for the the club charges, and I and I'm not saying this um, 
as definite, I'm just kind of talking out loud. Mm -hmm. If, say that I were to get rid of the late fees and only charge you for the eight months of dues and then the club charges, that would be over $2,000. Um, it would be about 3200 I'm sorry, 2200 mm -hmm. If, if it were, if you paid two thousand flat to cover all of this, we would drop the case in court, and you could have a. A membership for at least a year if you wanted to negotiate for for something longer we could work that out and then the only fee that you would have to pay you would not have to pay the monthly dues you would not have to pay for the cart rental but you would have to pay for any food or beverages consumed in the period that we agreed that you will have a no do membership. Um, and again, I'm thinking out loud. Uh, if so, I, if after that year, if it's in my head, kind of trial membership for a year goes goes well, and I um, we want to renegotiate staying on with the club. Um, Considering that I've already paid that $3,500, would that $3,500 membership fee already be in effect? Not, some, not something I'd have to repay, I'd just go back to a normal due paying schedule? Yes, and, and it wouldn't be. I could, if it's in the contract, and this is all in good faith to avoid having to go to court, I could lock you in at what it is now, which is 220 and or maybe even 200 per month, because with the way that the economy is, we will probably have to raise prices. But if we can agree on that here, then that would, and, and something else that we would need to do is a non-disclosure agreement, because we wouldn't want our other members to know that we were not going to raise your dues if you did decide to stay on because that could create a whole world of problems. Um, that would make sense. Um, while we're on that topic, I don't know if you have any insight into this or, um, but, but one of my concerns about potentially coming back or, or having a, a year long membership is. Recently, one of the clients that I have who is uh, a member of the club, um, after all, all this commotion with, with, with our conflict came up, um, pretty much stopped talking to me out of the blue and I, I lost a business contact. And so I guess I'm, I'm a little concerned too about my, how my perception is at the club um, coming from staff and coming from... Sure. Well, for, for me and for the, the keepers of the company, it's really a, it's a business. I mean, this is, this is business. Um, I would be more than happy to sit down with you and really talk at length about the incident where you believe that some of the staff were not, I would particularly like to know who it was and um, if they're even with us any longer and if they are what we could potentially do um, to remedy that but it's it is not our policy to talk to members about other members um, that that's definitely a, a breach of confidence and, and I feel a breach of our, our contract mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't really know what what to say about that I'm very 
very sorry for it, but there might be, you know, just some kind of, that might have been a lifetime member, that might have been somebody who was related to a board member. Mm -hmm. Who knows, it could just be some kind of personal thing like that, but um, I think in terms of, of dealing with how if you're concerned about the staff, we should definitely address that issue further. Um, but as far as the one member, I, I am kind of at a loss. Um, do you think that it would be possible if, um, if we decide that this is the agreement that we want to go forward, um, do you think, um, I, I'm, do you think that the case could be dropped sooner than later? Oh, the, the court case, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. If we can reach an agreement today, we can clear this up tomorrow. Okay. Um, so my, my understanding would be um, I would pay, pay, pay a flat fee of 2000 which would essentially come out of Covers um, the, the, some of the past due charges um, and the incidental charges. Um, in return to that, I, I would receive a one-year membership where I wouldn't be paying monthly dues um, or for a golf cart, um, I would just be paying for any incidentals that are wrapped on. Just beverages and food. Um, and then after that, um, if I decide that I'd, I'd like to stay on with the membership, I wouldn't be paying a new Joiner fee, and I would be locked in at a rate of two hundred dollars a month. Sure. Okay. And then we'd include a non-disclosure, and then at, at some other date, you and I would sit down and, and look through a book with pictures and, and determine um, whether the person that you encountered on the golf course is still an employee, or um, if they are, you know, if you believe they are still with us, then. And then um, if we agree to that today that this this case would get dismissed as, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we don't I you know, the country club has a really wonderful reputation and we don't we don't want this either. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I, I would be willing to to abide by those terms. So um, let me just get it just a bit, and I'll write down a memorandum of understanding and agreement, um, and I'll have you both sign, and you know, I'll notify the court that we've reached an agreement so that you can dismiss your cases, respectively. Um, but so the agreement is that, Mary, you'll pay a $2,000 flat fee, um, and that will give you a year of membership to the country club without any dues, and you don't have to pay for park rental, but you will have to pay for any food or beverage that you consume there. Um, and you have an option to renew your membership without paying a new membership fee for the $3,500, um, locked in at $200 a month. Uh, at a later date, you will both sit down and discuss the staff issue. Can we kind of set a time frame for that, maybe within a month or so, within the next 30 days? Would Def that be okay definitely for your schedule? within the next two weeks. Okay, so within two weeks. Um, and you, um, I'll also include a non-disclosure agreement and you both agree not to litigate this issue. Is that correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me pull it up. And I um, just want to let you know that this is binding under the Minnesota law. Um, and I'll just have you sign. If you just want to go over that. As soon as we conclude, I will um, just not notify the court that we've reached an agreement. Okay. Is there any other questions that you have or any concerns? Okay. 